day. You're watching African Free Press Television. My name is Sam Halidoy Kugi, bringing you the news today. First, the headlines. Tension as Masov declares support for a sit at home order. Kidnapped the Sherry landlords and trainer freed. Federal government and governors consider sales of national assets. Six die in cholera outbreak in Lagos. Bring back our girls endorses Buhari's appeal to the UN on negotiations. Now the news in detail. Despite yesterday's show of force by the army and police in Abba Abia state to forestall 23rd of September's planned protest by members of the indigenous people of Biafra and the Uche Madu led faction of the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masob, residents of the city are jittery over the protest as they engaged in panic buying. IPOB and Masob had directed its members and residents of Abba and cities in the southeast and south 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 to stay at home while markets and other businesses within the affected states should remain closed in furtherance of their indigenous in furtherance of their agitation for a Biafra state and the plight of IPOB leader Namdi Kanu, who has been in detention. Leaders of the groups say that there is no going back on today's protest. In Anambra State, the police command yesterday warned members of the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masop, and IPOP not to embark on any protest today as it would not condone any act that would cause public disorder. But Masop, in a statement made available in the media in Enugu State yesterday, said they shall continue to collaborate and partner with every positive move and steps that will affect the release of their comrades in different prisons and detention camps in Nigeria. And I quote him saying the request for closure of markets, public private motor parks, schools, and other public businesses and premises in such areas is voluntary and not by force. It is a mark of respect and love for our fatherland. As a non violent organization, the Armed France shall not be compelled or forced to observe the stay at home exercise. Masob and IPOB and other pro Biafra groups will not molest, compel, or intimidate anybody to observe the stay at home exercise, as all of our members shall stay indoors. There shall be no physical demonstration, street march, procession, or any other public function tomorrow in Biafra land. Three landlords at Oshoro Heritage Estate, Isheri and their trainer, kidnapped last Saturday on Channels Avenue, have been freed. Kennedy Uchuagu, Dr. Omolulu Belo, Fidelis Esang, and trainer Coach Oni were whisked away by gunmen clad in military camouflage during their routine exercise near Lake Garden Estate. Initially, the gunmen demanded 300 million naira as ransom for each of them, but the amount, as gathered, was later reduced to 20 million naira. It was gathered that the police have tracked down the suspects, mostly young boys, and their messenger identified as Mary, from the telephone number they used in contacting victims' relatives. The nation learned that security agencies would have rescued the victims two days after the abduction but that the hitches as the kidnappers were also changing their locations. The spokesman for the estate association who confirmed the release of the victims said they got home at the wee hours of Friday. The National Economic Council, which comprises Vice President Yemi Shibanjo and 36 state governors, has endorsed plans by the federal government to sell some national assets as part of the efforts to address the current economic recession in the country. The Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Laolu Akande, said in a statement that the sale of national assets was one of the recommendations of the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Udo Udoma, during the National Economic Council meeting on Thursday. Other recommendations, he stated, included the diversification of the economy and the use of recovered loot. The statement added as part of the measures to revive the economy, the present economic management team is working on plans to generate immediate larger injection of funds into the economy through asset sale, advanced payment of licenses renewal, infrastructural concession, use of recovered funds, etc. to reduce funding gaps and implementation of fiscal stimulus budget properties. He stated the government also wanted to fast track procedures through legislation and implementation of strategic implementation plan of the budget and engage the meaningful diversification of the economy and cut down importation. However, organized labor has warned the federal government to reject the recommendation to sell the country's assets, specifically its shares in the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Company Limited and the aviation industry. 
the Nigerian Labor Congress, Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, and the Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers in separate statements on Thursday described the advice given by the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, Emir of Kano, Alaji, Mohamedou, Sanusi, and Aliku Dangote as selfish and not in the national interest. Six people have died of cholera in Lagos, while 45 cases have lined listed by the Epidemiology Unit of the Lagos State Ministry of Health. The ministry has also raised the alarm over upsurge of diarrhea disease some communities in Isola Local Council Development Authority. Briefing the media yesterday, Health Commissioner Dr. Jide Idris said inoctural swabs which were collected from 15 cases taken to the Central Public Health Laboratory, Yaba, showed that initially there were no growth. However, continuous culture yielded vibro cholera from 7 out of the 15 samples. The vibro cholera was later confirmed to be Ogowa strain, Idris said. The commissioner said the suspected source of infection is the salad called habacha, a staple food common with residents in the solo local governments and adjoining local government councils. The commissioner had given information saying 26 cases were managed at the Solo General Hospital and the Lagos Mainland Hospital. 22 have been discharged. One unfortunately has died while three are still on admission at the Lagos Mainland Hospital. All three cases still on admission are in a stable condition. And finally, President Muhammadu Buhari has told the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon that Nigeria will welcome intermediaries from the, from the global body to negotiate with Boko Haram over the release of the over 200 girls kidnapped in Chiba Bono State over two years ago. Buhari's special advisor, media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adeshina, in a statement on Tuesday, quoted the president as saying this during a bilateral meeting with the UN scribe on the sidelines of the 71st UN General Assembly in New York. The president said the Nigerian government was willing to bend over backwards to free the Chibok girls who were kidnapped from the government secondary school Chibok on April 14, 2014. Buhari stated that the challenge is in getting credible and bona fide leadership of Boko Haram to discuss with. The government has reached out ready to negotiate, but it became difficult to identify credible leaders, affirming that we will welcome intermediaries such as the UN outfits to step in. The Bring Back Our Girls movement said it supported Buhari's invitation to the UN in the negotiation with Boko Haram on the move to release the Chibok girls. Bring Back Our Girls spokesperson Abubakar Abdullahi on Tuesday said the group endorsed any step that would facilitate the rescue of the Chibok girls. That's it on the news today. My name is Sam Adedonkiwi. Thanks for watching. This is African Free Press Television. Thank you.